And it's Hardcore Castle again for possibly the last time, if not very close. And today I have the daunting task of the Outer Bailey. There's not a lot of space in here, but oh, there's so much to do. But before we get on to that, before we start talking about what an Outer Bailey was, I have one small job to do for this. Let's get going. 2007. So this is a drainage channel from the kitchen and it'll go out through a culvert and into the moat. We need our bucket and our iron bars. Alright, let's see if this works. Are you coming? Oh, very, very, very slowly. How's it going? And it should go around the corner and through here and into the moat. Excellent! Just thinking about whether or not I flatten out some more of this area. i got to work that out. Oh, let's get the culvert fixed up first and then we can decide. I'll just get a bucket of well water. I love that well so much. It doesn't get its water flows mixed up like the moat does. And I'll just put some duck boards across. There we are. Time for a quick parsnip. Yum. I love parsnips. Especially baked. Oh, yum. It looks okay. Let's head out to the moat and see how it looks from outside. Oh, it was working before. It's not working now. It is working now. Hooray. Okay, so the drainage channel from the kitchen is done. Now I need to get started on the outer bailey proper beginning with an entranceway and stairs. I better go and get a whole lot of stone from our stonemason. So just what is the Outer Bailey and what was it for? The Outer Bailey is the space between the outermost walls and the next walls in. A lot of castles only have an Outer Bailey and an Inner Bailey like ours. But some have a middle bailey and extra walls between, such as Chepstow Castle in Wales. Our bailey here could also be called the lower bailey, as it is, well, lower in elevation than the inner or upper bailey. Outer baileys could also be completely open or divided into sections by internal walls, such as at Dyset Castle. It depended on how the space was to be used and outer baileys varied greatly in size. Some were barely 10 metres wide, others such as the one at Corfe Castle in Dorset were enormous, large enough to accommodate a sizeable fighting force or a whole village and still have space for sparring grounds or a regular market. This one is a little on the small side, my bad. Outer baileys could also be strategic death traps leaving no space for cover should enemy troops make it this far and little option for retreat. You may have heard the term Svinger. Some outer baileys were set up to offer little room for manoeuvre, forcing attacking troops into a narrow space where they could be easily picked off by defenders on the walls. I'm not using the word here because I don't quite have that set up and also because the word is German and this is an Anglo-Norman castle. The area tends to simply be called a killing zone or death zone or some such. If there were a specifically Norman word, wouldn't it be used? We've got Crenels and Merlins and machicolations, so why not a Norman word for this area? So I'm just calling it the Outer Bailey. If you go to visit Castle Ruins today, the Outer Bailey might have a couple of picnic tables or a little stall but otherwise it's an expansive, empty area of grass and rock. 
But in their heyday, outer baileys weren't empty. They could fulfill a number of purposes. An overflow space for workshops, essential to the running of the castle. Workshops that didn't fit in the inner bailey and that you needed in the castle in the event of a siege. It could be an overflow for accommodation, particularly for those associated with the workshops. If there was a siege, the villagers would move into the outer bailey to seek shelter. It could also be a space for extra troops as needed. Some castles had enough houses and workshops that the outer bailey functioned more or less as a village. Others held regular markets in the outer bailey. Livestock could be kept and grazed here. Extra crops might be planted. I can't bring myself to do that right now. Regardless, the outer bailey was a busy and essential part of castle life. Because the space here is quite small, I only have a handful of buildings. There's the castle carpenter, who is sharing with the wheelwright. The rope maker has moved in from outside. And a weaver has set up too. There are a handful of cottages for their families. And on the other side of that defensive wall is a small byre for the cattle and a couple of workhorses. Beyond that, the outer bailey becomes too narrow and steep for too much building. And so the castle is done. The master mason and his crew have moved on to the next building site, hired by another lord to build another castle, or by a bishop or archbishop to build a cathedral or monastery. The moat is finally finished. Everything looks safe and secure, but trouble lurks in the fields behind the castle. Bandits. They have been raiding our fields, harassing the village and disrupting the farmstead. As Lord of the land, I'm owed a lot by my tenants, but I do have to give in return. And one of the main things I am required to give is protection. So next episode, we'll be reviewing our defences, calling up the able-bodied from the village and taking on the bandits once and for all. Am I up to the task? <laughs>